In 2016, Earth detected a signal from an unknown region of space with no observable stars. The contents of this signal appear to be a series of data packets and a decryption key. Once decrypted, the data contained a number of logged entries from two planets in a binary system. Using the translation matrix sent in a data packet, researchers have translated the entries into English. The following transmissions were declassified and given to us to present. Log entry, Vela 4. Vela Rotat, 2572. Cycle 1 of the first annual. Greetings and happy new Rotat era. This is the time when all of my people spend time in the waters and reflect upon the past Rotat and remember where we came from. The last few annuals have been very eventful. I'm especially happy that I did not have to wait the full two Rotats to hear from you. It turns out that our planets are in a close rotation right now. Vela is closer to Vena, or as you call it, Haimavena, than we have been in quite a while. I find it fascinating that the names of our planets are similar in our own languages. I should do some research to see why that is. What do you call my planet? I'm so excited for you to be on your internship. It sounds like you're going to be discovering many great new things. I am still out on my circuit, but I should be heading home in the next few annuals. I miss father a lot, and I can't wait to see what he's working on. When I get back, I will be finishing up my general studies and applying to the local university for advanced studies. That is when we get to focus on the interests that really appeal to us. I feel very silly now that I look back on how upset I got over the transmission to your planet being shown to everyone there. I guess that the last few rotats on this journey has taught me a lot about opening up to people. Isnit and I are still spending more and more time together, and I did eventually tell her about it. She laughed at it and at me for being upset. So I guess I should say greetings or, as you say, hey hey, to everyone there. You can let Aaron know that while I still don't know what Futbolta is, some of my friends have speculated that it may be something like Bastriala, which is a sport we sometimes play here. It involves two teams in the lake, and points are scored when you use your bast to toss the ala over the boundary line of the other team. So how is Futbolta played? I understand that feeling of awe you describe on seeing the mountain range. Our journey took us to the southern coast of Senoth and right up to the beaches near the town of Loravar. The view out over the ocean is stunning, especially as Von La is setting. Isnit and I have spent many end of cycles just sitting on the beach and talking. That's not to say that we haven't been busy. You mentioned all of the extra work you've had to do. We have been installing many new signal towers and running insulated lines under the lakes. It's exhausting. The lake work is usually done by our strongest swimmers. I have mostly been testing signal strength and doing most of the work on the lines to ensure the best clarity. We've run into a few delays as there have been quite a few protests in the areas we've been trying to expand on. Many of the older Velens are complaining that they don't want the new towers in the area. They like the older ways of sending messengers. I think that they believe that this new technology will make us weaker and more reliant on machines, and that we would forget our roots and of where we came from. I had tried to explain to them that much of what we are came from early machines and technology, but they just wouldn't listen. You would think that people would like that we are trying to make their life easier here. Father tells me that he's experiencing some of the same difficulties with Laar's attempts to boost the signal to Chanar. That's the capital city of Sanoth. There are many people there that are like the few demonstrating here in Loravar. Most of the people there are very religious. I think that makes them angry to see how far we've grown in La'ar. You said you detected a signal? Are you tracking something? It's not an ice lion, is it? Please be careful. I would be very upset to learn that you got hurt while out on your adventure. It's okay to take risks and have fun, but don't bring harm to yourself. Maybe you should take Luna with you. If Farhoons are good at scaring away ice lions, she could help you. I do hope your head feels better. I know it's silly to say since it will be a whole rotat before you even see this. I am sending the healing waves to soothe you. May the waves guide you. Gisto.
Log entry, Haimavina 4, 2251, 51st year in the Age of Ascendance. Ira Nufspark, graduate, Exoplanet Junior Peer Program, Planetary and Environmental Science Academy. Hey, hey, Gisto. Happy new road talk to you. I'm happy that your transmission came back so quickly. In fact, it was just over a year between messages. Honestly, it couldn't come at a better time. I'm currently in the hospital, and I need to speak with someone other than my family and the nurses. Plus, the daily broadcasts are mostly focused on the upcoming Yothian election. Since we last spoke, a lot has happened. I finished my internship, and I graduated from the academy. My grandmother was the commencement speaker for my graduation class, and she totally embarrassed me. And I just started at Hopnia University, where I'll be working on my advanced studies. That brings me to how I ended up in the hospital. It was week six when the team leaders finally decided the interns could join them on our first trek to one of the outlying research camps. On our way there, a storm came in faster than we anticipated. We took cover under an ice shelf, but we weren't the only ones looking for shelter. Yep, an ice lion. A little one, but still dangerous. Luckily, Luna was with us. True to her nature, she fought off the attack and saved us all. But she and I got hurt in the process. Oh, she's fine. She's back at my parents' place. Me, on the other hand, well, once we got to the outpost, I had trouble breathing and was diagnosed with hypoxia. Luna came down from the twins with me, but she's convalescing in front of a fireplace, and I have hypoxia treatments every few months and physical therapy for my hip and leg. The ice lion clawed my hip, and I walk with a slight limp. My physical therapist is trying to change that and feels that I will make a full recovery. I want to be positive, but she's scarier than an ice lion. The hardest thing about getting hypoxia is that my hopes of becoming a field scientist are over. I can still become a researcher, but no more exploring above base camp. On the good side, I will be working with the EC Research Expedition on their communication staff here in Hopnia. It's not base camp, but I live in pretty exciting times, and they have given me a lot of work. And guess what? No more fetching tea. I'm disappointed, but sitting in this hospital during treatments, I've had a lot of time to think and come to terms with it. My parents won't say it, but I know they're relieved that I won't have to face an ice lion again. Truth be told, I am too. Enough about my woes. Let me answer some of your questions. Boss Triala sounds just like Futbolta, except we play on frozen water. I'm amazed of how many things we have in common despite our differences. I am also five feet tall. I'm actually considered tall for a female mana, which probably explains why the ice line went after me. I must look like a threat. Anyway, while your ancestors lived in oceans, that's so neat by the way, my ancestors used to live high in the mountains before the Sindas Anda. That's when most of the planet's population died out due to lack of oxygen. It is recorded that my ancestors came down the mountains because the air was too thin. We aren't really sure exactly what happened, and only a small portion of the population survived. The thin air limits our ability to explore, so we only have guesses. I wish we could swim like your people, but our ocean water is too cold. We mostly use our oceans for power and transport, but my friends and I also love to spend time on the beaches. Do you guys build fire pits? We don't have many religious people, though. I guess some people treat the environmentalism as a religion? My father would be a better person to explain it. My grandmother is like your father. She believes in advancing technology and returning to space. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. I mean, nature just tried to kill me. <laughs> we used to call your planet New Vala, but now we just refer to it as Vela because that's what your planet calls it. Thank you for your healing waves. Say hey hey to Isna for me. Your friend, Arya. Log entry, Vela 5. Vela Rotat, 2574. Cycle 25 of the second annual. Dear friend Ira, Much apologies for the lateness of this reply. I only recently got my transmitter working again. After I returned home from my secure, Isnid and I began many discussions of the protests and the political situation. Isnid was not happy with the views I was taking involving schools and the roles of mothers and fathers. She thinks this is due to the conversations that our planet is having with yours and the conversations that you and I are having. I tried to explain to her that my views are my own and that I think that we could benefit from having more structure in the lives of our people. She stole and damaged an important part from my transmitter and I had to wait for a new part to be manufactured. 
I'm very distraught about this. She's been spending more time at these protests lately, and I just don't know what to do. I have spent the last two rotats finishing up my classes and preparing to head off to university. I've decided to study communications and signals analysis like my father did. That program will involve a lot of study and even more travel to inspect some of the lines and towers installed by the student program I was involved in. Maybe having some time apart from Isnid will help both of us. It weighs a lot on my mind the thought of leaving her here with the protests going on and the state of things in Laar, but I think focusing on my studies is the best thing right now. I'm very saddened to hear about your accident. I was so worried about you going off to the land of the Ice Lions. I can understand your mother and father's concern. I'm not sure what hypoxia is, but it sounds like a terrible breathing disorder. Like when we dive too far underwater and can no longer filter the breath from the water around us. I have learned that our ancestors used to be able to stay underwater for a very long time. But since we started living on land, we can't seem to do that much anymore. Maybe it's the same for your people. I am glad that Luna is safe and was able to help you. I knew it was a good idea to bring her along. Please blow bubbles on her belly for me, or whatever the equivalent would be for something that is, how did you put it, fluffy. The Siki love it when we do that for them. I am sure that your mother and father will take good care of her while you recover. Of course, you'll probably be fully recovered by the time you receive this, and no doubt finding your way to discover the next great thing in your adventures. Did you ever find the thing that you were looking for that was emitting that signal? It sounds like you have finished with your studies and that you have graduated. I can certainly understand that feeling of embarrassment that parents can cause. My father has been boasting about this program ever since we started it, and he loves to tell people about his son who is now famous on another planet. I try and tell people that he has had just as many, if not more, conversations with people on Vena due to his work but all he wants to talk about is my transmissions. I will be happy when more of the other students get access to the program. Father says that they will be opening up applications to other students soon. He said that because of our status as the first student contacts, that we get to continue talking even after the others start. He is working with the team at the LAR radio telescope to increase the capabilities of the system. You see, while my transmitter is strong enough to reach you, it doesn't pick up the signals from you. Those still get received at the main telescope, and there are people there that help with all of the translations. You have mentioned the Sidest Anda a few times now, and I'm still confused on what that is. You say something happened to your people a long time ago? Is that why they no longer visit the stars? Maybe they have more information in your history books. I have read about a big change on our planet that happened over 2,000 rotats ago. It's one of the main reasons our people have cities now. The legend tells of a star that came to Vela and landed in Laar. This star brought new innovations and taught our people a new way of life. I'm not sure I really understand, and it's just a legend that was passed down through many schools and people. It even inspired one of the two religious thoughts of my people. Chanar is obsessed with the old legends, and that's what people believe there, that the stars will guide them, and only if they follow the old ways of paying homage to them will we all survive. Laar believes in studying the stars and learning new things from them, like we are with your planet. Oh, and we do light fire pits, but we don't use them very much as they tend to dry us out. Instead, we entice some of the bioluminescent lake and sea creatures close to the shore with food and bubbles. The result is the whole shoreline lighting up. It's truly amazing to see. I'm so glad that my transmitter is working again and that I was able to send this before leaving for university. I will be taking it with me. My classes in signal analysis should be able to accommodate it, and I'm sure that the other classmates will enjoy working with it and maybe even hearing from you. Your next transmission should come in while I'm there. May the waves guide and protect you. Gisto. Log entry, Haimavina 5, 2253, 53rd year in the Age of Ascendance. Ira Nufspark, Communication Department, Federal Historical Research Exploratory Corps. Hey, hey, Gisto. 
I love that your messages seem to come at times when I need to hear from a friend. It's like the universe knew that I was about to drown my sorrows in Akavit, and then the terminal chimed, and it was a message waiting from you. I practically ran to my desk. This week has been the worst, professionally speaking. An EC expedition team discovered some incredible technological relics from our past while working high on the glacier near the Twin Sisters base camp. As far as we can tell, the discovery was probably linked to the irregular signal that we were chasing when I was up on the glacier for my internship. I've been working on this project for a couple years, so I was very excited when the communications department selected me to announce the discovery to the public. But people always seem to play politics, and the job got reassigned to a more senior spokesperson with broadcast experience. What do they think that you and I have been doing all these years? Broadcasting. It didn't make a difference though. So here I am on the sidelines of one of the greatest historical discoveries in the past 50 years. I'm frustrated and disappointed, Justo. And maybe I was too idealistic. Who knows? My father laughed at me when I told him what happened and he made an old farmer's joke about the weather that I think was supposed to calm me down. I don't know what Thoka has to do with anything, but I love my dad. Hardly anyone is reading these messages anymore. Not like they were when we first started. Like on Vela, others have joined the program and the attention has shifted to new stories, but I can't tell you about what was found because my message will go public before the official announcement of the discovery. So the information remains embargoed. I'll tell you about it next time. I can't believe Isnid broke your transmitter. That seems like an aggressive way to make a point. I think she may need this drink more than me. I'm really sad to hear that she can't see the incredible benefits and advancements our plants are making just by the communication that is sent between our worlds. Even just you and me talking as friends, we're learning about our cultures that would be missed in the general transmissions. I wish I could tell her this. I know you have. Hopefully when you return, she'll be more open and you guys can work this out. Maybe hide your transmitter. I'm kidding. I too feel sad for you. If it doesn't work out, I'll to marry Fiska Sonju, which means there are other fish. Oh, that actually makes more sense for you since you swim so much. So, how are your courses going at university? I finished a year early, which I thought would elevate my position at the EC, but I already told you how that seems to be going. I know things will change with time and experience, but I'm starting to regret how quickly I rushed through everything. I mean, what was the hurry? All that studying, missing out on trips, trying to live up to a reputation that no one set for me except myself. My family is proud of me no matter what I do. Okay, that is clearly the Akavit talking. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. Look at both of us, distraught on two different worlds. I'm fascinated by this legend. A star landed on Vela and brought new discoveries to your people? How amazing. I wonder what it really was. A meteor, perhaps? We now know there's life on other worlds. Do you think it was a spacecraft of some kind? These are probably rhetorical questions, but it does make me wonder. Our legends aren't that interesting. Well, except for the story of a mana who glided down a foss on a board and fell into a river. Sorry. A foss is a point in the river where the water falls down from a vertical point. Anyway, according to the story, he watched his board get caught in the current and realized the water could push things. From there, he developed a watermill to harness the power of falling water. Come to think about it, most of our legends involve someone doing something dangerous or stupid that ends up leading to something good. I'm not sure it turning out well is really the best lesson. Thanks for listening to me this evening. Travel safe on your journeys. Your Fred, Iria. Log entry, Vela 6, Vela Rotat 2576, cycle 3 of the 4th Annual. Dear friend Ira, I am glad to hear that my transmissions have brightened your day. It sounds like you are having rough seas at the moment. I feel the same when I see that a new message has come in from you. It's hard with the difference in time, and I'm tortured over constantly wondering if my messages have made it to you, and if you're going to reply. All of that vanishes in the mist as soon as I hear that familiar ping of a message coming in from the La'ar telescope team. It's like waiting at the docks for a skiff to come in, and then suddenly seeing the light in the distance as it arrives. I'm very sorry to hear that you were selected to be the one to present the findings of your team, only to be removed from it. That sounds horrible to do to someone who is as talented as you. 
If the information is as important as you say, I can see the appeal of having someone more senior present it, but I don't know why they would tell you that it was yours only to pull it away. On the other web, you need to remind yourself that you are an extremely intelligent person who has so many things going for her at this time. It sounds like you have a great job now and will be at the heart of so many discoveries to come. While you may not have gotten this particular assignment, but as you told me, Alta Mary Fiscus and Jew. Our interpretation of that saying is, the next wave will be the one to guide you to greatness. I guess that doesn't work as well if most of your lakes and seas are ice covered. You will certainly get one of the next assignments and I bet it will be even bigger and better than this one. I'm sure that your father means well when he's trying to cheer you up with his advice. My father tries to give me advice all the time, especially when it comes to Isnid. Sadly, since he did not spend as much time with my mother, his advice is, well, not very good. He once told me that to get on her good side, I should buy Isnid a Serpa. I mean, it's hot enough in Laar, what would she need a Serpa for? Not to mention, no one even wears those anymore. I wouldn't even know where to get one. I'm sure he means well, just as I'm sure that your father means well. Please let him know that I hope his Thoka is well. I'm not sure what a Thoka is, but it sounds important to him. On the subject of Isnit, I was very surprised recently. During one of the university breaks, she did the most amazing thing. She traveled all the way to Trenoar, where my university campus is, for a visit and planned out a whole sightseeing trip for the whole time she was there. We had the most romantic dinners and trips to the local museums and spent many evenings out on the beaches. Treno R is very well known here as one of the pilgrimage points between Laar and the southern coast. It's also the closest point of Senoth to the Iwanar. That's the middle of Vela. She remembered my interests in all of the scientific outposts and even got us visitor passes to the Treno R Planetarium. They have a whole presentation about Haimavina, and you and I even get a mention. I think she did this because she felt bad for damaging my transmitter. She even said to pass on an apology to you for delaying the transmission. So I won't have to hide the transmitter from her. Not that I think I could, it's so big that it fills a whole closet in my radio signal class. We have created a whole class project around upgrading it with newer parts. I mean, it's over 10 rotats old at this point. There are newer ones available that fit on a counter now. I had to hook mine up to the dish at the university, while the new ones have dishes that could be mounted to the side of a building. Our technology is moving so fast, and a lot of it is thanks to the work that both of our planets are doing together. Speaking of my classes, I am so swamped. I feel like when I'm not studying signal patterns and analysis, I'm observing planetary rotations and orbits to calculate the best angles for observing them. There are so many calculations that it makes my mind swim. Normally, I like swimming. Now, I know it will be helpful if I can get a job in Laar, but there's just so much to learn. I feel like I should find a way to go back in time and warn that 13 rotat old Gisto who just got his transmitter, that he should start studying then and not worry so much about females and what other people think. In that respect, I envy you for being done with your classes already. I certainly wish I were done now. My brain feels so full. Now that you've finished, you can finally start to live your life the way that you want it. That has to be a great comfort. It sounds like you have your own place and you can live by your own rules. I can't wait for that cycle. I also can't wait to have the time to enjoy my own glass of Sidrus. I would love an ice cold glass right now, but I need to stay focused. And I'm sure you know, once you have one, you have another, and then the whole evening becomes a blur and you're wearing a botsy on your head and wondering how you got so far from the shore. Soon I will be done with my studies and be able to go home to father. I've already planned to get my own place near him so that we can work together, but I'm ready to be out on my own. I miss him a lot, but I will be happy to have my own space. I have about one more rotat here, and then I will graduate. I will warn my father to try not to embarrass me at graduation. On the plus side, I should be home by the time I hear from you again. 
Oh, and you don't have to worry about these transmissions being public here. All of the transmissions come through the La'ar radio telescope and get translated there by a special team. But those are the only Velens who see them. After that, they get sent to my private terminal. When I was younger, they sent them to my father to give to me, but since I have moved to Tre Noir, I have my own terminal that's private, and the messages get sent there. Because you asked about the legend of the star falling at La'ar, I decided to look into it a little more and learn some fascinating information. It seems that the star that fell was indeed a device of unknown origin. It was described as a box with wheels and arms, and for a while it even moved around on its own. Ancient Valen theorists started to worship it as a sign from the heavens. Eventually it stopped moving and they begin to investigate it and find out why it wouldn't move anymore. After that, the information starts to become strange. I guess it disappeared for a while and no one is sure what happened. Well, I'm off to study more and dream of the cycles that the waves will take me home. I hope the notification of this transmission brings you great joy and lifts your spirits as much as it has done for me. May the waves guide and protect you. Gisto. Log entry, Hymavina 6, 2255, 55th year in the Age of Ascendance. Irya Nuvspark, Communications Department, Federal Historical Research Expeditionary Corps. Hey, hey, Gisto. I'm writing to you from my new portable terminal, which allows me to write to you from the rooftop terrace of my residential building. I just moved here. I think you would love it up here. We have what we call a living rooftop. There are a lot of plants and ground cover and a lovely water feature. And we have a view of the sea that reminds me of the description of your home world. Right now, I can see your planet as Aluda sets. That's our star. I wave to you when I'm up here. I even got my neighbors to wave too. We gather up here at the end of every week to talk about work and politics. And I always end up answering questions about you and isn't it? You have a bit of a following. We actually toast our Akavi to you and recite the next wave will be the one to guide you to greatness. I love that saying, by the way. I've written it out and tacked it onto my terminal. It has been a bit of an inspiration to me. Tonight is the first night of the mural light celebration, and we're having quite a party up here on the rooftop. Everyone says hey hey to you. The celebration is named for a young mana named Mira, who brought fire down from the mountains to light our pyres, which then painted the sky with colors at night. On the first night, Yothians light floating lanterns and launch them into the sky. It seems a little silly now because we know that color streaks in the night sky are created by solar winds interacting with the atmosphere, but the lanterns are still really pretty to see. So I live on a flat with a great view of the festivities, and I wish there was a way I could send you pictures. I also wish you and Isna were here. I think you guys would both love my friends and my neighbors. They already think of you as family, or as school as you say. I'm so happy to hear that Isnit came to see you. What a great surprise. I love that you really thought about what you would like. I think that's really special. It also sounds like you guys had a great time. Well, tell her I accept her apology too. I can't stay mad at somebody who makes you this happy. Last time, I wasn't able to tell you about the big discovery the EC team made up on the glacier. Well, we found an ancient installation that was receiving a signal from Bradith, which is one of the moons that orbits Hymavina. The signal was a recorded message from a dormant space station saying that a transport shuttle from Mira just landed and a Ransaka was outbound. Even though Bradith does have a very thin atmosphere, we really don't know what is up there. And we're talking about a 2,000 year old structure. Anyway, while the message doesn't really give us much in the way of scientific data, we are now able to tell the difference between the current radio transmissions and past signals. Also, because the signal was verbal, Many linguists have made huge strides in their knowledge about ancient texts and pronunciation. I know some of the translators who work on our messages, and they are giddy about this discovery. We're still trying to decipher what a Ransaka is, but we think it might be another transport craft. Wouldn't it be funny if it was something else? Our systems engineers are trying to reverse engineer the signal to see if they can get more data from Braddock, but we'll see. 
I'll let you know. Well, work has gotten better since we last spoke. I'm officially one of the spokespeople for EC Public Affairs, which means that I answer questions from the press and I finally get to announce discoveries. I really enjoy this job. It almost comes as second nature to me. I guess fetching tea for a season did make a difference. <laughs> well, it's probably from all those interviews I gave as a young Mana about our messages. Seriously, your words about the next wave had really helped me. I don't dwell on my childhood dream to be an explorer, although I do miss the chaos at base camp, but I think this is where I'm supposed to be. You asked, and unfortunately, our transmissions are still public. They're not as widespread, but they remain popular in certain circles. I should probably explain to you the process of how my messages are sent to you. Once I've completed a message, it is sent to the Yothian Exoplanetary Communications Group, who sends it out to you. When you reply, they do the translations, but I usually get a raw message before the official translation, because I've been studying your language in my free time a little bit, and I have a rudimentary understanding. For example, I received this message several days before the official translation was completed. It's only a few days, but it does make your messages feel more private. The translation team is great, and they love getting your messages. They often tell me it's more fun to translate your messages than the official ones. In your last transmission, you mentioned the star, which I thought sounded like a lander or a spacecraft of some kind. Well, I think we're both right. It obviously came from another planet, and we know there's a tons of planets in our system. It would be oddly coincidental if it was from Haimavala Prime. Although we were spacefaring around that time, but your planet is really far away, and I don't think we were able to travel beyond our star system back then. I'll do some research just so. I think this could be kind of important. Anyway, take care of yourself and Isnid, your friend, Irya. You've been listening to an episode of the Binary Saga. The part of Gisto has been read by Steve Petricelli. Ira has been read by Vanessa Shannon Anderson. Music by Eric Matias and soundimage.org. For more information, visit binarysaga.com. <laughs>